You ever just want to quit your job, buy a boat, sail around the world? Well, what if we told you that was possible? I'm Rad. And I'm Sasha. With more willpower than money and a dream to become pirates, we bought a sinking sailboat and spent the next nine months transforming it into one of the sexiest boats on the seven seas. There is nothing that can get in the way of us sailing around the world. So grab your popcorn, hit subscribe, and be prepared for one hell of a story. The story of our lives. This is the journey of Spirit Animal. Look what has become of our beloved dinghy. It's been there for us since day one, during the hard times when Ben and I were eating coconuts and stingrays just to survive. It survived three trips to the southern Bahamas and back, and has had hundreds and hundreds of fish tossed in the bottom of it. It's been punctured by fish fins and pole spears, weathered crazy storms, and has been overloaded with people. It made a 16 mile journey with a massive gash in the side held together with nothing but zip ties, and it got us home safe. There was another time we ran aground going full speed, and it patiently waited there for three hours, drifting over the flats until we got into deep enough water to get back on plane. But the moral of the story, it got us home safe. It's helped us move all our belongings to our new boat. It's been shot at by paintball guns. It's been loaded down with massive solar panels, thousands of pounds of batteries and electronics, an unlimited amount of construction debris, and has delivered every piece of plywood in 2x4 that has helped us rebuild our entire boat and it got us home safely. And all the meanwhile, while we were sleeping in our cozy beds that night, this thing was collecting barnacles in the Fort Lauderdale Canal. How could we ever repay something that has been so loyal to us? Well, the day has finally come that we don't have to pump up the dinghy anymore because... We're getting a new one, baby. Hi, Field. Let's go. <laughs> Come on. So, oh we're yeah. Late. We're gonna be late, so we have about 30 minutes to get there. And they've already unwrapped it for us. You have my shoes. Where's my shoes? Ayana, are my shoes up there? Here we go, baby. Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh. We can't wait. Oh, these are our friends. The Adventure Crews. Ready to get this new dinghy? Oh my yeah. god, we cannot wait. I did it a year ago. Oh, that's the... Hey, your, your arm's going off. <laughs> yeah. Are we dragging? Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Onward! Pull tagged along to help film and lend a hand because we had no idea how we were going to get this dinghy on the truck. Yeah, finally, I'm so excited. Ah, uh, it's the Highfields 360, I think? Yeah, it's, Three, foot it's a 12-foot, 12-footer. Yeah, so now we don't have to worry about no more pumping up the dinghy every morning and afternoon. <laughs> Time for a new dinghy, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Nautical Ventures in Fort Lauderdale, Florida is a certified Highfield dealer. We walked in and met up with our good friend Billy who was gonna help us take care of all the paperwork, which of course went smoothly. All we had to do was sign our life away. Make sure and read the fine print. <laughs> <laughs> and just like that, it was time to go lay eyes on the new dinghy. And if you guys have ever watched that movie, A Christmas Story, we felt just like little Ralphie the second he got his hands on the Red Rider. This thing was just like we'd imagined, the Highfield CL360 Classic. 12 foot long with all the bells and whistles right out of the box. I mean, this thing came with a bow step and the cleat, a Highfield swag bag, oars and a patch kit, a custom dry bag, a dinghy pump, a cushion that stores your life jackets and a removable seat. Look for your beer. Oh, yes. This model only weighs 165 pounds. It has a bow locker in the front to hold your gas tank and distribute the weight properly, a floating floor so your feet don't get wet and you can run your gas line under it, a 
And of course, it's got the teak foam for comfort. I mean, what else could you ask for? You are in heaven. And she's on. Woo! That's exciting. We'd been manifesting this moment for a while now. In fact, we designed this hardtop to hold this exact model. If you look at the lifting points on our davits, you'll notice they're off-centered a little bit, but they're directly in line with the lifting points on this dinghy, which means when it's hoisted up, it'll sit centered and snug up against these two outside support poles. Ready? Now, when we pulled up to the seawall, we realized there was only one way we were gonna get this down. It was about a five foot drop to the water and the whole edge of the seawall was loaded with sharp barnacles. So we were gonna have to push it out and pray for the best. Is that boat clear over there? Yeah. Like I'm just gonna drop it. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I've never heard you do that laugh before. <laughs> that was nerve wracking. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you were. I think you were scared. <laughs> Whoa! I think it's like you just saw your dinghy flash. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I saw the dinghy life flash before my eyes. <laughs> Time to take her home. That's right. Beautiful she is. Sure. <laughs> this, right? Ayana, we literally threw it off the wall. I was like, oh! <laughs> Wow. She's so pretty, isn't she? Yeah, that's awesome. Sasha slept good that night from the adrenaline of the dinghy stunt. Well, now that we got the dinghy, it's time to put the spirit animal touch on it. We went with the 12-footer so we'd have plenty of space for four people in dive gear, which is also why we upgraded to the 30 horse a few months back. Our 65 quart cooler fit like a glove, and due to the shape of the floor, water was still able to pass underneath. Now when we're diving, we constantly get in and out of the dinghy, which brings in a ton of water. Literally every time we change spots, we have to pull the plug, get on plane, and wait for the water to drain out. So we installed this bilge pump, which is connected to this battery switch and tied into this 20 amp hour battery in the front. Of course, we wanted to figure out a way to charge it so we didn't have to plug in the dinghy all the time. Solar would get in the way and is a little too big. So I thought to myself, man, I wish outboards had alternators. Well, it turns out they do, sorta. It's called a voltage regulator or rectifier, and a lot of outboards come with them already installed, but ours didn't. So we bought one off Amazon and hooked it up. Basically, your outboard produces AC voltage, which come out of these two green wires that come from your flywheel. The voltage regulator turns the AC voltage into the correct amount of DC voltage to charge your battery. So now when we're idling, our voltage regulator sends about three amps to charge the battery. And when we're on plane, it sends about 10 amps, which is more than enough to keep the battery charged. Now on our last dinghy, we had this grab bar, which was super helpful. So I sent some blueprints over to Jay, who welded one up for us. Jay was the one that also welded our hardtop. His contact info is down below. Once again, he was dead on with his measurements and the grab bar fit perfectly. Now it's time to drill and tap the holes so we can bolt it on the dinghy. And since we have a battery and a way to charge it, we decided to also add a small chart plotter, which will be super helpful. Now we can mark our favorite spearfishing spots, follow our previous tracks so we can navigate around coral heads at night, and we can even drive ahead of our sailboat to check depths before driving into a shallow areas to avoid running aground. And lastly, we wrap some paracord around the grab bar to give it some style and also some extra grip. And just like that, our dinghy was ready for the grand adventure. Sasha! Rafa! How you doing? Good. Great. That's all you gotta say to the camera? Yep. Well, we are running a couple... What are we doing? So right now we're doing some last minute touches we are running Starlink on our boat. We're setting up a freshwater and saltwater washdown. We are rebuilding compressors, buying last minute gear like scuba tanks and all that stuff. The boat is wrecked right now. 
but regardless, it's starting to take shape. So we got some pecs that we're running. Um, this is a freshwater shower. And then over here, just rigged up a saltwater wash down. Goes in there. And I put a lever here where you can change it to fresh water in case you want to hose the boat down. That's a 50 foot coiled hose that runs down this pipe. I cut it so it's flush there. And also installed a water nozzle right under it and also made it so that when this folds down, shit, I needed that. When that folds down, nothing hits. So this comes up, pin goes in, salt water, fresh water. It's pretty nice. Now this here is a Max Air dive compressor that we found for sale on Facebook Marketplace. We drove an hour north to go check it out. Only two and a half hours on the engine. There was no signs of wear, the paint looked beautiful, and it started right up. We get it home, go to fill up the scuba tanks, and it only reaches 500 PSI instead of 4,500. You've got to be kidding me. So I take it apart only to find that the internals were completely rusted. I mean, yeah, the engine had no hours on it, but this guy probably left the oil cap off and let it sit in his garage while the salty air chewed up the cylinders. So I texted the guy the pictures and I gave him a call. And to no surprise, he doesn't seem to care. He doesn't apologize, he doesn't offer us a refund, he just starts making excuses and telling us that he has a boatload of problems and that he needs the money. As to which Roth replied, You have no idea. And he hangs up the phone. I mean, I am literally losing my faith in humanity. We get burned on the boat, we got burned on the compressor, a person's word means nothing these days. Deep breath, deep breath. It's just gonna be another one of those times where we're gonna have to be the bigger person and keep moving forward. So I called Max Air. Turns out they are an extremely awesome company. They felt really bad for what happened to us and gave us a killer deal on a block that they had sitting around the warehouse for a while. Not only that, but they took the time to tell us about preventative maintenance and all the extra parts we might want to carry since we're going to be sailing around the world. Once we got everything installed, this thing was running flawlessly. And we were really excited when it pumped up our 80 cubic foot scuba tank in 22 minutes. I gotta say, this compressor is definitely the best bang for your buck. So we have this compressor on board and we have been trying to figure out a way that we can keep it on deck while also having it protected from the elements. And we actually found this dock box, Facebook Marketplace, but obviously it needs a little bit of TLC. To make this box look brand new, we are gonna have to take it down to bare bones. To do that, we drilled out all the rivets for the hardware and the hinge and then vacuumed it out. Next, we used Total Fair by Total Boat, which is a great fairing compound. And after mixing the two together, it was time to give the box a makeover. Next, we went over the whole box and filled in all the holes and rough patches. Once the fairing compound hardened, we sanded it down smooth and we used alcohol to remove all of the remaining dust. Okay, so at this point, I've gone through and fared it, sanded it, and also de-waxed it. I'm gonna go through and put the first coat of primer on. I got Total Boat two-part epoxy primer. So I'm gonna mix that up. Just roll that first coat on and let it dry and see how it looks. Mix it up well. We put an even layer of the primer all the way around the box, as well as the inside of the box to cover any exposed fiberglass. We have let it dry, and now it is time to put the Total Boat Wet Edge. One part polyurethane topside paint. What I'm gonna do to prep for the paint, one last step, is to make this nice and smooth. It has a bit of an eggshell texture to it. We used a light 400 grit sandpaper and then wiped off the excess dust before adding the first coat of wet edge. So I've applied one coat of the Total Boat Wet Edge paint at this point and it is looking pretty good. I just finished doing the final coat of sanding just to roughen it up and now I'm ready to put the final coat on. 
We wanted to make sure this last coat was perfect, so we added a little bit of brush thinner so the paint would leave a flat, glossy look. Well, I finished. Honestly, I don't think it looks too bad. Okay, Sasha did a wonderful job painting this box. Check it out. And that thing looks better than brand new. I know what you're thinking now. Why didn't you paint the bottom? Well, that's because we are gonna cut it out. If you put this boat box on the front of the boat, it is massive, like it's really tall. We're gonna cut it down about five inches off the bottom so that way it sits a lot lower on the deck and is lower profile, it looks better. And then we're just gonna glue the base straight to the boat. To compensate for the curve of the deck, Roth cut out a piece of cardboard, marked it in the center, and laid a pencil flat on the deck and traced out the exact curve. This way the box would sit perfectly where it needed to. We started by marking some measurements and drawing our guidelines before making our cuts. You can see after tracing the curve of the deck, it's ever so slight, but just enough to make a difference. Rob started by drilling out two drain holes at the back end of the box before using a multi-tool to cut off the rest. Okay, we've got this placed and you can see that gap is tight. Everything's good, we've got our two drain holes on each of the back corners here. The last step was to clean both surfaces with some alcohol and then glue it down. We wanted this installation to be permanent, so we used 5200 around the inside of the box and a UV resistant white silicone around the outside. The next day, we reattached the hinges and admired our new deck box. However, we had a lot of projects to do and limited time to complete them. So on to the next one. So here you can see a very, very messy boat. And here you can see Raphael, who should be editing a video right now, procrastinating while laying on our bed. As I'm trying to film a before and after to show you how it looks. I'm working. On what? Investment opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> And do you want to explain what kind of investment opportunities? Metal detecting. <laughs> I was going to say, does it involve treasure? When we got the boat, it had this very sterile look about it. Just all these white walls. It's just not a look. Since we uh, took out the walls and made our master, we really wanted to make it feel more like us, more homey, comfortable, and just like more vibey, you know? So we went to Lowe's and we found this stuff. Smart Core Ultra. And we have finished one of the sides already. And uh, I want you guys to tell us what you think because I'm a huge fan. That is what it originally looked like. Then we span over and what do you guys think? I'm a huge fan. I think that it looks great. How do you feel about it? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's so nice. <sighs> It just flows, like you can see it kind of like goes with the cabinets, with everything, and it flows into that room and it just looks badass. And then if you come over here, you can see how this is all cool and then it's just blah. And standing on the other side of the boat, you just get a whole different feel. It feels like the boat's bigger because that room is part of this whole boat. This is actually super cool. It's got some blues and browns in it which go with our entire theme. And this is lame, this is cool. Now we're gonna go finish the other side and make it all look cool. We removed the shelf and the old white panel, then glued and screwed up a quarter inch piece of plywood so we had a flat surface. It may look like wood, but it's actually waterproof vinyl flooring. We'd score it with a razor blade, break it over our knee, and glue it on with adhesive. I might add that it's mold resistant and doesn't shrink or expand throughout the seasons. since we're on the topic of accent walls, we decided to go ahead and do another upgrade. So we got a little carried away and almost forgot to film, but we are doing something very exciting. We used to have this black foam, that like soundproof foam on our backsplash of our office, but I have really bad allergies, so it was causing me to sneeze a lot and it was very difficult to clean. So we found this awesome vine wall on Amazon and we're swapping it out and it still has soundproofing capabilities from when we're doing voiceovers to prevent any sound from 
echoing off the wall. And to top it off, we found this awesome neon light, which just gives it a little bit more of a modern vibe. It's always nice to bring in some greenery, and hopefully this helps us work more. On to the next project. Okay, we're about to dress up our dining room table. We have a really cool logo that is going to inspire us as well as teach us some things about where we wanna go or places we wanna visit. This is our beat up dining room table. As you can see, it's stained, scratched up, and in dire need of some restoration. But instead of your typical sand and refinish, we decided to turn it into a world map. For the decal, we went online and found a vector image which can be blown up to as big as you want, and then sent it to a local print shop to have it printed at the correct size. We plan to pour epoxy over the decal which heats up while it cures, so if there's any air bubbles under the decal, the epoxy could cause these to bubble up. So the first thing we did was sand the table, put a couple coats of poly on, and sand it down smooth to make sure there'd be no air pockets under the decal. Next, we set it down where we thought it looked good and then peeled off the backing and used a credit card to work the air bubbles out as we placed it on the table. We then took a razor knife and very carefully trimmed out the edges. And now it was time for the epoxy. For this, we used Total Boat's two-part tabletop epoxy. We mixed it up for about five minutes and then poured it on the table. This stuff is great for deeper pours and it's self-leveling. We spread it evenly with a putty knife and then went over the entire table with a heat gun which removes all the small bubbles that are trapped in the resin. Of course, we had to put Polk County on the map and later realized that we had a hitchhiker on Midway that was going to stay there for future scientific research. But all in all, we're really happy with the final outcome. We can now brush up on our geography, plan routes, and daydream at all the places we want to visit. Now the next thing on the list is not another project. It's some necessary items to help keep our fridge full. We're heading to go get the only item we truly need on our sailboat. Items. 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 We're heading to go pick up the Mythicon spear guns and fins. We're pumped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mythicon does some excellent work they really take pride in their craftsmanship. It's a father and son company out of Greece and their attention to detail and just the performance of their products are truly outstanding. This is the pre-spear gun dance. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Hi. Tony, what's up dude? Hey guys, what's hey, up? Hey, how are you? Not catching me at my best. Oh my God. <laughs> Didn't know I was gonna be on camera. What up, man? What's up? We None gotta document the moment. Yeah, this is special so. for us. Yeah, come on in. <laughs> oh, these are our fins? Those are your fins. Oh boy. Don't cut my fins. Split them right down the middle. Nah, I wouldn't do that. I need to make sure you can keep up with me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. See the spirit animal oh, logo? Wow, look at that. Now everyone's gonna know who's diving. RG tins. Check those out. Those are clean. The Your Hydro pleasures. Thunder. The Holy Grail. These are the ones <laughs> Ralph is talking about that are a lot more efficient because this is just wasted. So those would be really cool to try out. Great for deep diving. They said these are better structured for spear fishing. They lay the carbon at different angles. So the way these twist and stuff and just recoil with all the crazy movements of spear fishing, since it's nice. not just a straight up and down dive, they say those are better for nice. the hunting. And the flex too. Nice. There's, look at how much you can flex them and they just don't break. I was told that was <laughs> <laughs> behind the scenes. <laughs> Grab your gun. Okay. This one, right? Mm -hmm. Got the Argus. Get out of the way. Oh man, oh man. Think you can load that? Oh yeah, I've been practicing. <laughs> <laughs> she has been doing rows like every day in the gym. The gym. <laughs> Yep, I can do it. Cool, so this is my gun. That's yours. Whoa, that is a big gun. Look at that bad boy. Let me see that smile. <laughs> you look so excited. This is sick, I'm ready. 
Wow. For such a big gun, it's crazy how that I can hold it like this. That's how light yeah. these things are. And the grip is just so comfortable, man. It like just fits in your palm. You can tell the way it's shaped. Serious grip action. Beautiful gun. This is a work of art, man. You're all set. Cool. Of course, we couldn't leave without testing out some of the guns. So we hit the pool. We jumped in the pool and of course, ladies are first. So Sasha loaded up and took her first shot. You got it? Yeah, bullseye. And sure enough, from 20 feet away, she gets a bullseye. Although this was not a competition, clearly the pressure was on because it was my turn. Bullseye! All the way through. These guns were incredible. Not only were we drilling this target from 20 feet away, but the shaft was going through the target and into the pool. These guns are 100% carbon fiber, which means they're very light and extremely powerful. When the shaft is in, they are perfectly balanced, which means you don't need to strain your wrist to point at what you want to shoot. Not to mention the side-to-side -side profile is designed so you can effortlessly swing this gun from left to right with one hand. And after you take your shot, you can let go of your gun because these things float. Right now, our confidence is through the roof. Now that we got these Mythicon fins and guns, nothing's safe. Time for us to set sail, guns blazing. Thanks everybody for tuning in to another episode of Spirit Animal. We have one more week of projects until we set back off on our grand adventure around the world. And I know some of you guys enjoy the projects and lucky for you, we live on a boat, so we get hit with new projects just about every week. Other than that, we always wanna thank our patrons. You guys mean the world to us. We really wouldn't be dedicating our entire weeks to editing these videos if it wasn't for you. If you guys like this episode, go ahead and hit that like button. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button right next to it. But we really appreciate all of you guys, your support, your comments, we do read them all. And we'll see you guys back here next week on Spirit Animal.